All right, Alex, you ready for this? You ready for this? All right, in three, Go. two, one, we're gonna raise the tripod all the way up to this level, my nose, all right? Your nose, my nose, all right, ready? Three, two, one, go. What's up, guys? My name is Alan, and I'm a cinematographer and DP residing in Orange County, California. And today, we're here at Alex's studio, which is called The Steady Studio, to shoot a bunch of his videos. So while that's happening, I figured, why not shoot a bunch of my videos as well? So today, I'm going to be talking about all the tripods I've ever owned and used during my filmmaking career and why I chose to spend so much money on a specific type of tripod. With that being said, I wonder if Alex is done. All right, I'm done. So we're here with my entire collection of tripods I've ever used in my lifetime as a filmmaker. And uh, one of the things that I guess new filmmakers tend to forget about is the essentials, which is a tripod. Whatever camera or whatever rig you have, whatever heavy camera you have, the tripod's always gonna be there. And gimbals and everything is cool and all, but like the tripod, once you invest into it, it'll stay with you for a very long time. I rank my tripods in tiers, so I went through six waves of tripods before I had the current one that I have right now. We're gonna start this list off with the first tripod I've ever owned, which is essentially a tripod that I think every filmmaker has had in the past. So it's one of these tripods right here, which is essentially your typical Walmart tripod. You can find these for like, what, 20 bucks? Uh, the construction is not that great. Also doesn't really give you that much control either. I outgrew it pretty fast when I started moving on to DSLR. So this is great for point and shoots, but not great for what I was trying to do with it. The coolest part I found out about this tripod is that it has like this little <laughs> rising thing. I think it only goes up to like, yeah, <laughs> it only goes up to my chin. So the next tripod I ended up buying was this one. This one costs a little bit more. All right, this one's around like the $70 range. I bought this mainly for traveling. And at the time I had a Canon 60D and it was kind of not the best head to put this on because this can't handle the payload that the 60D and the 24 to 70 2.8 lens uh, had. This tripod actually isn't the best for videos. I found this out when I shot a wedding and I had the Canon 60D on here and the bride's about to kiss, the wind actually started shaking the whole tripod. And that was when I realized, you know what? Maybe I should not stick with a travel tripod for professional use and start going back to an actual tripod for video use. But I still use this to this day because it's so flexible. I brought this to Seoul when I was shooting my Korea travel video and it's great when you need to get like time-lapse shots, especially since airlines have so much restrictions. This next tripod is kind of a weird tripod. This actually looked really cool and the concept was really cool where you had like the pistol grip and you can like kind of rearrange wherever you want it to go. For that stuff, I was like, dang, this is awesome. But in practicality, wasn't the best. And also the legs were still kind of the Walmart tripod legs, but a little bit better. This was a good upgrade, only lasted me for not that long. At this point, I wasn't really doing a lot of video work, more photos, so this was great, but not for video. Moving on to this tripod. This tripod is actually one of the first tripods that I bought strictly for video. And I think at the time, I was debating whether or not I should do photos or videos, and photography just seemed a little boring to me, and I liked videos a lot more, so I ended up buying this beefy little tripod at the time, and this tripod at the time was only $139, and it was probably the best bang for your buck tripod that I've ever bought. And I still use it to this day, which is kind of crazy, right? I mean, this tripod is literally looks like a tank. One of the things I liked about this tripod was that it was my first fluid head. I could control the pan and the tilt, and it didn't give me a lot of control, but it allowed me to get smooth motions that I would never be able to do on the other tripods I've owned. Um, this tripod was great because it also has a ball head and uh, allows me to get it to the height that I want and then level it out really, really easily and fast. Great tripod. Uh, I still have it to this day, so I use it as a backup 
tripod in case my other one breaks or dies or something. So this next tripod is actually one of my favorite tripods to date. And uh, one of the reasons why it's so good is because this was the first time I bought a tripod that had mono locking legs. And if you guys don't know what mono locking legs are, they're the closest thing to like setting up really fast. So essentially you can have the tripod all the way down and then when you want it to get raised to this height, you literally just raise it and then lock it and it's only one lever to lock the tripod. I bought this tripod in 2017 and this tripod was such a game changer because of the fact that I could do these adjustments like really fast. So if a director wanted a you know, really high angle shot, then I was able to you know, remount the camera really fast and get that tilted shot. Um, on my other tripods, there are two stages. So you actually have to go around and do what Alex did. One of the biggest considerations I had for purchasing like gear later on is that will this equipment last me? Will this equipment also help me instead of, you know, limiting my abilities as a filmmaker? Because half the time I don't want to be, you know, worrying about if gear will work or if gear won't work. And I know for a fact that this tripod will work all the time. This tripod is pretty similar to the other tripod that I just mentioned, but this one takes it a step further with uh, three counterbalance and it supports up to 17 pounds, which is kind of crazy for its price range. It's a great tripod for, you know, when I was like leveling up to the professional end of the spectrum. This one is probably the most expensive tripod I've ever spent to date. Uh, this tripod, pretty much with the head, costs around $2,000. You may be wondering why I would spend so much money on a tripod like this. And there's a lot of reasons as to why I would spend money on something like this. When I first started out, I didn't really care about my lower back or my back. And so what ended up happening was I got injured. And as every other camera person can tell you, your back is pretty important. And it's one of your most important assets and you want to protect it. And uh, unfortunately, I didn't really listen to that and I got back problems and Later on down the road, I realized all what all my mentors were talking about with their whole camera people always having back problems. I thought it was a joke, but man, uh, had I listened all those years, I probably wouldn't be having major back problems right now. So there's a reason why I bought this tripod and this tripod is great because it allows me to be a one man team and I can literally set down the tripod all the way down right here for low angle shots. And then when I actually need to like get it up to this height. I can literally just hold the handle and just raise it up all the way and then lock it down. Super easy, just like that. It even goes even higher than me actually, which is pretty high. One of the reasons why I really, really like the Flowtech system is because of their carbon fiber legs. The carbon fiber one is actually really, really light. It's ridiculous how light this thing is. Before, I really, really didn't like moving the tripod around because when you have like a really heavy tripod setup, you really don't want to move or like you want to be locked down in one position. But because I got this tripod, uh, I actually enjoy moving the camera nowadays to wherever I want and however high and low I want it to go. Another thing that this tripod has that my other tripod also had but wasn't as easy to take off was the spreader system. And the spreader system is great, especially when you're in tight corners and you need to maximize the amount of space possible while having a stable camera build. Awesome part is all you have to do is press a button and then it'll unlatch itself. When you're putting the legs together, it actually has a magnet, so it actually snaps shut all the legs together so they won't move around during transport. Another thing that this system has that the other tripod doesn't have that I've owned in the past is that you can't really get really low on tripods. And with this system, there's a latch system where it clicks in and then you can actually one man operation, just level it as a hi-hat, which is really cool. Um, none of my other tripods could do that. So bundled together in this package was the Sockler Ace XL head. And this head combined with the Flowtech 75 system was actually a really good deal in my opinion. And for me, it fit the work that I'm trying to do right now, which is run and gun and documentary style filmmaking and here and there narrative style filmmaking. The head itself 
is one of the better heads I've used. Granted, it's probably the first thing that I'll probably upgrade in the future to a nicer head. But for now, it actually works for all the things I want to do. It handles a lot of like the fluid pan and tilt motion that I need, as well as giving me the control I need in a fluid head that I didn't have before. And one of the things is I can now control the pan from 0, 1, 2, 3, and then the tilt from 0, 1, 2, 3. The eight step counterbalance system is actually pretty important because when you're rigging heavier cameras, you need a higher payload on the head. And to prevent the camera from falling down, the counterbalance is there to act as a, a balance system so that when the camera droops down, it'll shoot back up. In case you forget to lock the tripod, the tripod doesn't just fall to the floor or the head with the camera falls to the floor. When I got this tripod, I was actually really shocked that, you know, this had a LED illumination bulb, which works so well. I don't have to hold a flashlight to get my balance. This system also has pan tilt knobs, so you can lock down the camera like any other tripod. Uh, pretty simple, easy to use. It also has a tightening screw for the plate. Super easy to use, it slides out and then slides in. To be honest, had I just you know saved up all my money and bought this tripod, I think, it would have saved me the pain of owning all these tripods that I have right now. Uh, so, but you know what? It's fine. I, I like to use this, you know, monument to kind of showcase how far I've grown as a filmmaker. Don't think that, you know, you need to get this tripod immediately. I actually just worked my way up and opportunity came and I bought the tripod. So, uh, so far, Great investment, no regrets. Uh, but yeah, if you like this video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and hit that bell notification for more future videos. And I'll see you guys next time. See ya.